We started an outpatient on level 11 uh, with hematology. When he was a month old, he was diagnosed with neutropenia, so he just couldn't fight any infections. And so we thought everything was okay. And that was when he was a month old, fast forward, we did some injections at home, COVID came around, and we thought we had a pretty good handle on things. He started acting a little bit uh, goofy in terms of you know, falling down more, just way more lethargic, nosebleeds. and nosebleeds, yeah. So then we took him in, and this was June, and we just assumed that his neutropenia was back, and that's really, it was a Sunday, you know, June 7th is when we got the word, you need to get to Iowa City, uh, he has leukemia. And from there, it was just a whirlwind, uh, because on we were in the hospital on average 21 days for chemo treatments, back home for maybe 10 days, and then back out in the hospital. And we did that for four, five rounds, um, and got discharged at the end of November. And thankfully with all the treatment that we had and, and the fact that we caught it early, uh, he was able to get in remission and stay in remission. Mm -hmm. And so that's really where it takes us to today is he's still, he's in remission. We follow up annually. That'll be for the rest of his life. And so really just trying to build more awareness because we know there are a lot of families out there, unfortunately too many, and we've lost too many uh, young kids that we know personally to this, disease called cancer. And so I think we can, you know, the more we can talk about it, the more that we can do about it. Hopefully we can get to some other cancers like breast cancer, another thing where people are talking about it, the funding is there, and that there's more outcomes like his. And I remember the very first time we ever went up to level 11 and the elevator doors opened. And on the wall, it says level 11, hematology and oncology. And I remember looking at John and saying, no, our kid doesn't have cancer. And I said to Jen, oh, I'm so thankful that that's not us. And then when our pediatrician said, you need to get to Iowa City now, we think his blood work is showing indicators that he could have leukemia. And he said, there will be a room ready for you. And that's when it hit that this is not going to be a short lived like, and there's not a mistake. They didn't make a mistake on this. This is, this is gonna be a big life altering thing. It's terrifying, you're, you're fighting for your kid's life. And in our case, we had four other kids at home. So life doesn't stop. I would say that first 20 plus days was the, the most difficult because you also don't know what, what you can and cannot do. Um, you're trying to figure out how is this affecting them. And, you know, just trying to maintain weight to, there's just so many things that go into it, but really that initial time until you're discharged for the very first time, you know, you're just terrified that, you know, this isn't gonna work and, and what are our next steps? Um, sometimes, you know, not that you feel bad, but sometimes you almost feel bad because we have such a positive outcome. Um, but then we try to look at that and say, this is actually the outcome that we all want and pray for. And so hopefully with what you guys are doing with Dance Marathon, uh, talking about it at the game and anything that we can do, people wanna donate and just, try to make things better. I think my favorite is the big event though. Um, it, especially when you do the family walk-ins, the energy in that room is just so overwhelming as a family of all of these college kids who are giving up their entire weekend and staying awake the whole time, literally for your kid and for kids like them. At 20 years old, to be willing to give that much of your own time when you could be doing a million other things is just amazing to me. He, um, he is actually doing really, really well. He just started kindergarten yesterday and he loves going to school. He, we are so happy to say that he is just a typical five-year-old little boy. I mean, there was a time when we were in the hospital where he literally couldn't walk and we were really worried, like, is he going to be you know, is he going to be okay developmentally or are we going to have some hurdles ahead of us that we don't even see yet? And so far we've seen none of that. He's riding a bike, he played baseball, he's playing soccer this year. It was just amazing when they stopped and they took those couple of minutes out of the game to wave and let you know that you were seen. Even when there wasn't a game before they could do that, Herky and the cheerleaders would just go to that little parking lot area and they would wave up to the 11th floor. Other people walking by would wave, even when it wasn't game days, they would just stop and wave up. It was just, just so overwhelming to know that other people were thinking of you and they couldn't help it. They can't, they can't make that cancer go away and they can't fix what you're in the hospital for, but just acknowledging that they were there and they were thinking of you made a big difference.
I remember distinctly, you know, both teams turning around and just waving and, and just tears coming to my eyes because, you know, you just knew you weren't forgotten. And so I think it's one of the best uh, traditions in football. And, you know, we're just glad that we got to be part of it.